We're told to consider the complex number z is equal to negative one plus i times the square root of three, find z to the fourth in polar and rectangular form. So pause this video and see if you can figure that out. All right, now let's work through this together. So first let's just think about what the modulus of z is. We know that the modulus is going to be equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the square root of three plus the imaginary part squared. So it is going to be negative one squared plus square root of three squared, which is going to be equal to one plus three, so principal root of four, which is equal to two. Now the next interesting question is, what is the argument of z? And the reason why I'm even going through this is once we put it into polar form, it's going to be a lot easier to both visualize what it means to take the various exponents of it, and then we can convert back into rectangular form. And so let us, let me draw another complex plane here. Imaginary axis, that is my real axis. And if I were to plot z, it would look something like this. We have negative one in the real direction, so that might be negative one there. And we have square root of three in the imaginary direction, square root of three. So our point z is right over here. And we know the distance from the origin, the modulus. We know that this distance right over here is two. We know that this distance right over here is square root of three. And we know that this distance right over here is one. And so you might immediately recognize this as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Because in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the short side is half of the hypotenuse, and the long side is the square root of three times the short side. So we know that this is a 60 degree angle. We know that this is a 30 degree angle. And the reason why that helps us, I know it's hard to see that 30 degree, the reason why that helps us is if this is 60 degrees, we know that the argument here must be 120 degrees. So the arg of z, the argument of z is 120 degrees. And so just like that, we can now think about z in polar form. So let me write it right over here we can write that z is equal to its modulus two times the cosine of 120 degrees plus i times the sine of 120 degrees. And we can also visualize z now over here. So its modulus is two, so that's halfway to four, and its argument is 120 degrees. So it would put us right over here. This is where z is. Now what would z squared be? Well, when you multiply complex numbers and you've represented them in polar form, we know that you would multiply the moduli, so it would then be two squared, so it'd be four right over here, and then you would add the arguments. So you would essentially rotate z by another 120 degrees, because you're multiplying it by z. So it's going to be cosine, of 240 degrees plus i sine of 240 degrees. Once again, two times two is equal to four. 120 degrees plus another 120 degrees is 240 degrees. And so now where would z squared sit? Well, its argument is 240 degrees and its modulus is four. So now it is twice as far from the origin. And now let's think about what, I'll do this in a new color, what z to the third power is going to be equal to? Well, that's going to be z squared times z again. So we're gonna multiply two times this modulus. So that's going to be equal to eight times, and then we're going to rotate z squared by 120 degrees. So cosine of 360 degrees plus i sine of 360 degrees. And so that's going to put us at eight for our modulus, and 360 degrees is the same thing as zero degrees, so we are right over here. So this is z to the third power. And I think you know where this is going. What is z to the fourth power going to be? Let me move my screen down a little bit so I have a little more real estate. z to the fourth, well, I'm just going to take this modulus here, since I'm going to multiply z to the third times z, I'm gonna multiply that modulus times two to get to 16. And then I'm going to add another 120 degrees. Well, I could write cosine of 480 degrees, or 
360 degrees is the same thing as zero degrees. So this I could say is zero degrees. This is zero degrees. So if I add 120 to that, I get cosine of 120 degrees plus I sine of 120 degrees. So my argument is back to being at 120 degrees, but now my modulus is 16. So there's 4, 8, 12, 16, this outer circle right over here. I am right over there with z to the fourth. So we're almost done. We've just represented z to the fourth in polar form. Now we just have to think about it in rectangular form. Now, lucky for us, we already know what cosine of 120 degrees is and sine of 120 degrees is. It is, we can construct, if we want, another 30, 60, 90 triangle right over here. So the hypotenuse here has length 16. The short side is going to be half of that, so it has length 8. And then the long side is going to be square root of 3 times the short side, so it's going to be 8 square roots of 3. So if we wanted to write z to the fourth in a rectangular form, it would be the real part is negative 8 plus i times 8 square roots of 3. And we're done.